kabila ndio kwao hapo shafika kweli na hakika kadiri na shika frak wala hiki ndio kwa shabiki waji kuziki bif na fiki hit na diki muda muna wiki mimi na hiziki split ni mukiki tutafuta siki kwa makini fulisi sauti mala sili filmi filmi Just talking a little casual with us right now, I would just like to um, present a little something something so that we can uh, marinate on it and uh, go from there. <clears throat> well, stop pussyfooting around, brother. What, what is it that you want to say? <laughs> okay. All right. Just be patient. What's the rush? Chill out, cool the, cool down, chill out, all that ghetto stuff like a language that y'all like to use, whatever. Chill out. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> what I wanna say is is very easy. I uh I would like to thank the most honorable Elijah Muhammad for coming in my life as a young person when I had nobody at all. When as a young person I was in very much need of some kind of guidance, some kind of an adult example that I could look up to. And when I was a very young person although I have never met the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in my life Although, due to recent information about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, of which I disagree with, of which I find very disturbing and troubling, regardless to all these things, this man came to this boy in a book. And from that book, growing up, of which was still the segregated South, still under Jim Crow, growing up in that environment, surrounded by dark-skinned people who actually hated their skin color and made mockery of this little boy due to his dark complexion. But because of the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, reading this man's teaching gave this little boy self-pride, confidence, building from a place of low self-esteem to a higher level of esteem, proud but not arrogant. And I thank the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for doing that for this young man. And as they say, in those religious teachings, we thank Allah over and over and over again for the coming of Master Farah Muhammad and raising up in our midst this man who did suffer a lot and did sacrifice, who was only human, although y'all claim he was divine, but he was a human being and he made mistakes, but he did very very good things and if it was not for the teachings of the honorable elijah muhammad i very seriously doubt i would be speaking to you right now because those teachings affected me when i was a little boy on my own nobody forced me to listen to the teachings of the honorable elijah muhammad this was a decision and this was something that i heard and i accepted and i embraced as a child it was not forced upon me Unlike the Christianity prior where I was forced to go to church and listen to these teachings and nobody really explained nothing to me. These teachings by the messenger was brought to this child. I was able to. And this is what I love about the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is that he made things and taught so simple that a little boy at eight or nine years old I was. Perhaps maybe even a little younger because I was an avid reader. I, I learned how to read very quickly and I, I love to read. 
when I was younger. Well, I still do. I don't find too many things <laughs> really interesting. But uh, I thank him so much for giving me what some of y'all may call black pride. However, as I began to mature and evolve in this life, and I want to say quite honestly, and this is the reason why I have come to the conclusions that I have come to in the present day. I've never felt as though just because I have dark skin, I'm called black. I don't see nothing and have never felt nothing special about it. Oh, I know, brother. Well, brother, that's because you don't know anything about the penile gland. You don't know anything about melanin. <laughs> well, we have had penile glands since slavery. And the penile gland have done nothing, did nothing to solve that situation. We are a melanated people. I, I saw and you see that melanin did not do anything to help the slaves. And some of you talk about your third eye. Maybe you have 12 eyes. I don't know. All these beliefs and things that y'all carry around with you. All these things did not do anything for slaves. And they are not doing anything for you right now. I've never felt special simply because I have dark skin. What makes you special because simply because you have dark skin? It takes a lot more to make a person than your skin color. There's a whole lot of other factors. There are a lot of murderers that have dark skin that's melanated. There's a lot of rapists and pedophiles and woman beaters and man beaters and child molesters all of them have uh, melanated skin many of them have the penile gland many of them if they want to I guess they can see with their third eye matter of fact I heard an argument between two black conscious type people and one was telling another because they was homosexual they really couldn't live up to the potential of being a real black person. And the homosexual person was saying they have a third eye. They can see more things than they can because they're more connected and whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's all well and good. Again, none of these things have done anything to solve your problem when our ancestors were physical slaves and it's doing nothing and has no effect upon us right now in the present day. It's doing nothing for you except just like the church make you feel good. I guess you speak in tongues, you hoop and holler and run around uh, the mosque or the debate lecture floor, you know, when you get happy or whatever. The only thing you've done was exchange the type of church you go to, but the reality is all you've done is just switch to a different kind of a church. The same type and similar thinking patterns, the same type of behaviors. There's nothing different about the church in comparison to black consciousness. You have the same mentality. That's why your condition have not changed. If I take this blue off and put on red, that's a change of something. We see no change in the behaviors of the so-called Negro, African Americanists, color folks, the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin 
a people who once called themselves soul. And when you called yourself soul, you was on your way to a better place because you was taking yourself up out of skin color. You was taking yourself up out of religion. But when we hold on to skin color and black pride and black power, the only thing you have done now is adopt a version of what y'all say or call white supremacy. You're nothing but an Oreo cookie. So all of y'all running around talking about calling people coons, you need to shut up because that's all that you are. But let me say this in conclusion. The Honorable Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said it best. We need to get to a point where we no longer judge ourselves and other people based on their skin color, based on their race. But we judge others based on the content of their character. And this is something that we ignore. This is something that we just avoid. We don't deal with. And the reason why we don't deal with it is because unlike uh, dark skin, you, you have no choice. You don't have to work on your dark skin. You, you got it. Your pineal gland, you got it. If you got three eyes, third eyes, or five eyes, whatever, okay, y'all got it. But there's something that you don't want to work on that is most important of all, and that is content of character. And many of you fail in that. That's why you don't talk about it. You don't talk about content of character. And you know, and social media can bear witness how nasty, disrespectful, y'all are a bunch of liars, gossip spreaders, slanderers. You love when brothers and sisters go to war with one another and have beef. You don't do nothing to stop it. The only thing you do is sit back in the cut and laugh, and it's all entertainment for you. And while they beef and argue and fight among one another, all of you are sinking deeper and deeper into the quicksand. Foul mouth. You're nasty and vulgar. You put your sex life in the public. And you talk about what you suck this and lick that. And you're nasty and you're trifling. You are unrighteous. But in order to change your condition, you have to become a righteous person. But you're not. You're just as nasty and foul mouth, just like the devil that you copying. You have become a racist wannabe. You can't be a racist because you lack the power. But you have the same mentality as your slave massa. Black pride. There's no difference between black pride and White pride, white supremacy, black supremacy, it's all the same stuff. It's all vulgar and nasty and hate filled. And all of it lacks character. All those involved in that mentality and that mindset lacks character. You will find that they are nasty, they're arrogant, envious and jealousy, foul mouthed, vulgar, dis disgusting. And that's what you find. You know I'm telling you the truth. Because it's not about skin color. When we have been lambasted and degraded because of our skin color, that goes to a certain point and you begin to love yourself. But then you must go beyond race. You must be go, be, be, go beyond skin color. And then, like Dr. King says, now it's about evolving yourself as a human being, it's about your honesty, your content of your character. What is it that we would like to discuss today? And I'm very sure you're interested simply because of the title. What is the title? What is the topic that I have chosen for these short, brief few minutes? 
And I want to say that it is always an honor to come before you and that you would give me a few moments of your time so that I may express myself. And I would hope that you would find that what is being said, what is being presented, is beneficial not only to you, to me as individuals, but that we can find that what is being said, what is being advised, what is being suggested for us to do is something that is real and that it could actually work to benefit us so that we may finally begin on this choo-choo train, begin to pick up steam and move forward and put heat in the oven and let the water boil so that that train can start moving up a hill because that's our problem. We're, we're on a hill and we're struggling like a train. You know, you ever seen a train trying to go up a hill? It's chugga, 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 and it's moving, trying to go forward and it starts slipping back a little bit because it's on this hill. It is time now. And we have the coal, we have the wood to put in the fire to cause that water to be boiling. That water is our wisdom in this oven, on this train, this soul train to get that moving forward. One of our problems is that we're not uh, following behind the right engineer on the train. We are following those who have not qualified to be an engineer. They should not even be behind the operational uh, part of the train. They should be in the caboose. They should be back somewhere else. If anything, they should be throwing fire into the oven, not guiding the train. So we are on a train trying to go up this hill. We should no longer try. We have the skills. We have the capability. We have the resources. We have the means to get the train up the hill. And once it gets up the hill, you know it's all good. It's all smooth sailing. But we got to get up this hill. The topic that I've chosen is really an imaginary one. A fictional one it's not really real because it's going on 500 years and in this nation these racist pink people who who control and rule over this nation is going on 500 years not 50 years not a hundred not 200 actually going on 500 years, how many years since the uh, Lincoln administration? The President Abraham Lincoln suggested before his assassination that the newly free people, in order to give them a start in life, and at that time, the United States was still a lot of it was still an agricultural type lifestyle in uh, that they were living. So in order to get these new free people, give help give them a lift and get in, back into society, the uh, Lincoln administration suggested that they be given 40 acres and a mule. However, after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, and I believe it was the administration of Ulysses, Ulysses, Ulysses S. Grant, I believe that's his name. I don't keep it with these people now. I could care less. But the administration, those who took over leadership after the, after the death of Abraham Lincoln, they said, up them nigger. Basically, that's what they said. We don't give a damn about them. And they took that off the table and gave us nothing. 
But you want us to know. But see, the thing about it is, these free people had so much tenacity. They had so much pride, and they still had this work work ethic. But now, instead of working for Amasa, now I work for me. They still work so hard. They still out progress the races. Thus, the Ku Klux Klan. Thus, the black the black codes. Thus, Jim Crow segregation. Thus, there was a need to take action. So these dark skinned people who just came out of chains, they cannot progress. This was done on purpose. This was not done to the Chinese. This was not done to the Irish. This was not done to the Africans. This was done to these who are the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin. So evil. That's such an evil and wicked thing. And you have those people running around here trying to justify and act like they don't, they just ignore what has happened to us. These are some nasty, and y'all want to keep living with people with this mentality. That's, that's on you. You go ahead and do that. Myself, this ministry advocates separation. Not segregation, but separation. Period. We don't need to be around pink people at all. 500 years is enough. This relationship needs to stop. It needs to be over with. Now, to help do that, like I said, go back to, it's imaginary because you're dealing with people who are not just. They're wicked. They're nasty. Well, you've been living with them for going on 500 years. You know what kind of people you're dealing with. But let's just say, for instance, if for some reason, and I did put out a message to uh, the president-elect, president Donald Trump, and in the solution process, we should be given what is called reparations. But you should not give reparations to an idiotic, childlike, silly people. First of all, many of y'all Negroes, you claim you don't want reparations. So I would take your share, okay? But the bottom line is the current mentality and mindset of the so-called Negro in America, the descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin who used to call themselves the people of soul, they don't have the right mindset to handle reparations. They don't, they, they don't have the right mindset to handle separation. But should reparations be put on the table, then those reparations need to go only to those who are willing to separate, leave this country once and for all. Because this is the reason why. Reparations is given to a person or a people to heal an injury, to heal something that another country or a nation done to another people or a nation. Reparations, reparation or to repair, to repair damage. You cannot give reparations. To these people in this country, black Americans, because they would not use it for to repair and heal themselves. They are not in the right state of mind at all. The first thing they would do, just like when they win the lottery, buy Cadillacs, Mercedes Benzes, big old houses they don't need, and all kinds of foolishness. You see this with the wealth that they currently get. They have... There have been many, many dark-skinned people who have lots and lots and lots of money. You see, they do not use their wealth to try to repair the injury that was done to us as a group of people. They do nothing. They attempt to try to live the lifestyle of the races. So you see Beyonce and Jay-Z and Jada and Will and Oprah and some of our business people. They are trying to live like their masa. That is not the purpose of reparations because this shows you a mentality that is still injured. They have money, but their mind is injured. They have not healed. 
They are victims and are a wounded person. So reparations need to go to those whose mind have been healed, who are willing to separate from this nation. So when you give them their reparations, they are going to a place where even if they wanted to, they cannot buy a Cadillac, a Mercedes Benz, these houses and all this other frivolous, lavish garbage that excites you because you are a slave, that excites you because you've grown up in a materialistic society when you should be comfortable only with having clothes on your back food in your belly and a roof over your head simple as that you don't need all this other stuff but in this society and coming from a slave background we looking at our masa look how masa lived but masa was wrong masa living because he is taking he and she is taking advantage of the labor of other people if you actually do the labor if you have if you actually have to do the work we'll see how lavish and wonderful that you live you got to cut the grass you want a big house but you got to cut the grass you got to dust it you got to do all like that we're gonna see how big you want your house yeah you have a big house but it'll be big and nasty the grass won't be cut properly Dishes always in the sink, <laughs> you know. Now, during the process of, of reparations, like any shopper, you're looking for the big, you know, the best deal when you're trying to build a house or do make a project. So, some of this money will go back to, you know, those who gave you the reparation if they offer a service or a product that you can use. And you know the, the the I mean we look we need a deal here. We're building a nation. Even if you was building a house, everybody's looking for a bargain. But overall, reparations, all that is get it stays it stays among you. It is not going to go into our community two or three times and leave like it's doing right now. And like I say, those who want to stay among the, the wicked, they can do that. Those who wish to be righteous, those who wish to seek a, a brand new reality for themselves and their prosperity, then they can separate from these devils, not only be proud of your skin color, but have a brilliant and work on yourself so that you can have a, a good work ethic and content of character so that you can get along with your brothers and sisters and build a new reality. This is the reason why your enemies will not give you reparation. Because you will become something they want to be. You understand? Not necessarily having money and wealth and all this. They don't have content of character. They don't have honesty. They are not righteous. But to, but to watch you come up out of this filth and get clean and come out of your house shining and beautiful. Woo! They don't want that for you. They don't want that for us. Sit back in the cut, y'all. Cause as you know, on this forum, we keeping it real. <laughs> okay. Now, I don't know. There are a certain group of people, I guess, they must think Angel Snup Nup 7 is a punk. No, Angel Snup Nup 7 used to be a punk. Matter of fact, that's part of my mental problem. We're going to talk about that. My mental problem. Because I'm a punk. They think that Angel Snow Number 7, uh, that I won't defend myself. I can't defend myself. You got me, y'all got me messed up. You got me confused with somebody. I have been on social media since 2007. And uh, I think I have done a pretty 
pretty good job of defending this ministry. I have defended myself against personal attacks and I can defend whatever is being advised or suggested coming from this rostrum. I do, I do not say teach. I do not teach anything. To teach means to train. Train you to do what? Train you to be what? I'm not training you. I'm not teaching you to be anything. The only thing I am advising and suggesting to us is that we think for our sins. That we re-examine much of the things that we have been taught. Start all over again and think for yourself. And reject these fairy tales and these delusions and these fantasy and stop all making black liberation entertainment or edutainment. Black struggle, black liberation is not edutainment. It is not entertainment. None of that. There is nothing entertaining about a black man with a rope swinging on a tree or a black woman on a rope swinging from a tree or you shot eight times in your back while you're trying to get away from a crazy racist pig police officer what's entertaining what's what's edutaining about that it's serious business and since y'all don't take it seriously these devils these crackers these pigs are going to continue to do what they do to you because you will not act in the appropriate manner because it's all entertainment or edutainment however you want to say it however you say it you won't respond properly because you behave like children and you have a childlike mentality you want to call your mama and your daddy to come and get the bad man you know how when you when you were young some of us were young and a dog would approach and you would run up under your mama's skirt and grab her leg because you was afraid of the dog that's how we are. So a black man gets shot eight times in the back and you expect just as you go running to the very people that chances are they will let that man go. And you know this. But that's your mama. That's, that's your parent. That's who you're always running to. Let the justice his system handle it. Let mama, let papa, let the, let the crazy racist pink people let them handle it because that's your mom and your daddy but if you look at their history they don't give a damn about what the law said if necessary they take law and they take it all in their own hands that's what adults do but you're not an adult you're a scared wimpy child and the people that are scared wimpy child children have the nerve to attack me. I'm an adult. You ain't got a chance in hell. That's why most people will remain silent and leave me the hell alone because they can see very clearly that I'm nothing to play with. If you can't attack Caucasian racists, you better leave me the hell alone. I want to deal with this issue once and for all because I'm going to bring you the ultimate evidence the ultimate proof so there is no there is nothing else to say now when I first came to social media my purpose was to expose the evil and the injustice of psychiatry that's what I've done the reason why many of these suckers many of these idiots know that I was incarcerated in a mental institution for about 10 years is because of me. I said it. There is no shame in my game. I went to a nut house. Other black men go to prison and jail and spend a long, long time unjustly. You hear about black men getting accused of rape and murder and other things and 40 years later they are found innocent because those devils knew they was innocent when they put them in prison and jail or the nut house. They already knew these things. So I got caught up. So I was added to the statistics of black men in prison, jail, or the nut house, however you want to say it. So many of you understand this 
and you sympathize with me for a little while until for some reason I piss you off. I said something you didn't like. I did something you didn't like. All of a sudden, you understood uh, what the cracker done to me, but now, now you mad. See, that goes right back to how childish we are. How is that going to change you? Now you upset. I, I see why you crazy. I, I see why they lock you up for 20 years. You see now. Huh. Now. So, like I said, I put that out there. They did not expose me. I put the information out there. They would, you would never have known. That information is private. I put it out there. But see, I don't mind people making, if you want to make mockery of what happened to me, that's cool. You know, you, you find some kind of joy that a black man went into a nut house or a prison or jail unjustly because you mad now. Some of you are probably very happy that my brother, Nacho Tahuti, is in prison because you didn't like him to begin with, whatever. These same hypocrites are going to talk about how much they love black people. I'm a black people. Brother Nacho Tahuti is a black people. But y'all find some kind of joy and happiness because I was locked up and Brother Nacho Tahuti is currently locked up because you don't like us. Oh, y'all some old fake hypocrites. But I'm going to bring your crap to an end as far as I'm concerned, because if you're going to tell a story, make sure that you tell it to the end. Let's put out some facts. Let's bring the facts. Let's bring this to the end. Is Angel Snup Nup 7 a mental patient? Was he ever a mental patient? That's another thing. You talk about the cracker is a liar and a deceiver. Who gave... Angel Snub Nub 7 a mental illness. A liar and a deceiver. And you believe him. Because it fits your purpose now. You did not diagnose me. You are not qualified to diagnose anybody. Okay, so since you believe what the cracker said, so now I'm going to present evidence to show you what else that the cracker, the devil, this pig, has to say about Angel Snub Nub 7. In a way, it's sort of good because my enemies have studied me for 10 years. They know me. And of course, they don't want to say anything good about me. But check this out real quick. <clears throat> my time is running out. I want to present this very, very quickly. Well, fact number one. Fact number one, this is the medication that I never took. I never took this medication, Zyprexa and Risperdal and some other crap. I never took this, but these, these liars reported that after I took this medicine, uh, it was all good. The only thing that happened was I faked the funk. I just agreed with everything that they said to make them believe, and they then they continue to lie, talk about, wow, now the medicine is working. No, the medicine never worked. The only thing I did was agree with what the hell they talking about. You know, just like you. The only thing I have to do is just agree with what you're talking about, submit to your, the crap that you present, and it's all good. You know why? Because y'all devils too. Now, check this out. Here we go now. What was here we go? Gonna go back to that. Let's get this court paper. Can y'all read? All you suckers can read. Here's a court paper. It says, I am Mr. Ray. That's my old slave name. I'm Mr. Ray. And it says that uh I'm not in the in the reasonable future, likely to be a, a danger to myself. And it is not dependent upon Mr. Ray taking medicine. And uh, you read it for yourself. I don't have to talk about it. 
Now, the, 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 the thing about this is they say once you have a mental illness, you have it the rest of your life. So it says here that I do not suffer from a mental disease or defect. Well, what happened to it then if I have it the rest of my life? See, they just got caught up in their own damn life. Never had one to begin with. So when you tell the story and tell it right now, they said right now, the date is December the 7th, 07. Your, your masa says, I do not have a mental defect and I don't need medicine. That's what your masa say. Now also, to put the frosting on the cake, here's another document where it says, and it's talking about that I have been approved to handle hazardous materials. They do not. This is the, the Department of Homeland Security. The, the Department of Homeland Security does not approve of people with a mental illness background give them permission or approval to handle hazardous materials. Case is done. Case closed. Y'all have lost it. It's over with. So the next time some idiot brings in your face, oh, he got a mental illness. Oh, he has a mental illness? Why? Because some, some crackers and some devil says so? Then remind them of what the cracker also say. Remind them that the cracker say uh, I'm, he has no mental illness. He does not need medicine. Now, like I was telling you before, there's an advantage to this because since they studied me, upon investigation of my records, you will also see now these are my enemies. I remind you, these are my enemies. They don't say nothing about me being a liar. They don't say nothing about me being a thief or disrespectful to women. You don't see none of that in my records out of 10 years. So what does that tell? Now you, nobody has studied you. But we can tell something is wrong with you. That you have some kind of mental disorder. Something is wrong with y'all. You're nasty, vulgar, disrespectful, arrogant, envious, a bunch of niggas. You can't describe me as a nigger. I don't lie according to the to the white man. I don't steal according to this white man who has studied me for 10 years. I don't disrespect women according to the white man since y'all believe everything the white man say. So there you, there you have it. All these people talk about anger snuffed up is insane based on what some crackers, some devils say. Well, the same devils say contrary. Now what you gonna do? Now what you gonna say? Matter of fact, actually, they have helped me look pretty good. And now you look more stupid than ever. Oh man, Woo. getting ready to retire and I don't know when the next time I will be able to uh, make a couple of videos so I'm going to try to make all the videos I can while I have the time. And uh, this being my last video for the night, I want to speak about a uh, allegation, an accusation. Those of you in YouTube land that have been following uh, my activity, you may know about certain allegations and accusations made against me and certainly I deny and I have proven or it has not been proven that these things are in fact uh, a fact correct I have a problem with false allegations and accusations however an observance of my behavior was brought to me and it has some type of validation so I would like to address 
that uh, issue, um, hopefully not to justify my ill behavior, but to bring you or give you a explanation of why I present myself in this type of manner. Oh, my dear brother, what is it that they have accused of you now? <laughs> well, <clears throat> on Facebook, there are certain people who tell me that, uh, first of all, nobody is listening to me. Well, clearly, they are listening to me they uh, are very negative they don't like what I have to say but they are listening to me so I do have at least one person I know of that is listening to me it's them but I want to give them uh, the benefit of a doubt perhaps it is constructive criticism and this is what a certain person has brought to my attention that I would like to present before the public and my audience <clears throat> because you may feel the same way also I am told by certain people or person especially this person on Facebook in one of our groups they tell me that uh, I am lost, I am confused, I am a coon, I, you know, all that type of rhetoric. And the reason why they say this is because I am so negative against dark skinned people, black people. I have nothing positive to say about black people and they are partially correct that's true I will admit that I don't have a lot to say positive about black people however when I do see certain positive things I will uh, sometimes talk about the positivity in the so-called black community that uh, I know of <clears throat> but that is not my purpose my purpose is to be one who gives advice my purpose is one to suggest to you my purpose is to be a warner to you I have never heard a warner be nice. I am trying to warn you of danger. I never heard a warner say, tell you, if you're getting ready to go into a blazing fire and warn you that the building is about to collapse and try to tell you don't enter that building. I've never heard them try to tell that person, oh, by the way, your shoes look real nice. You have a pretty wish watch, wrist watch. You have some pretty hair. No. You are going into a life threatening situation. And I'm trying to warn you so that you don't risk your life unnecessarily. So, this is where I find myself in. There are enough people who teach these pretty fairy tale stories about ancient Egypt, the tribe of Shabazz and the motherships coming out the sky to come save you and they telling you stories that you can change your citizenship or what they call that, your status corrections and all this stuff and it makes you feel good like you have some type of power and you were a king and you were a queen and you were a goddess I'm not about all that I'm not about you feeling good because 
that makes you feel like you are Iron Man or somebody. So when I tell you, don't go into the fire, here you are all hyped up. And you actually believe you can go into the fire and you won't get hurt. And you do. And you follow these people who pumped you up and hyped you up. And you become disappointed. And this has been going on for a very, very long time. You will never reach your goal that you claim that you want, which is black liberation by keeping your mind, keeping yourself in the realm of fantasy, fiction, and delusions. Feel good stuff. You might as well have stayed in the Christian church. Many of you are still in the Christian church. And you go every Sunday and every Wednesday whenever there's a service and the pastor gives this fantastical speech and it makes you feel good and you get all hyped up. But then if that pastor told you the reality that, that you don't want to hear, then it's different. You don't want to you don't want to really hear the truth. Yet and still now, you are taught that the truth shall make or set you free. You don't want to hear it. You're not really interested. Because actually you're comfortable in your oppression. And when you are losing, when you come up with an idea and it's not working, you want somebody to, to tell you a lie and tell you that's working. You don't want nobody around you because you feel good about this stuff. You don't want nobody to tell you that it's failing. However, if you understand that it's failing, then before you lose it all, save yourself some resources and try another way. So the reality is Temple is only showing you, not, I'm not trying to be negative, I'm trying to show you that what you're doing is in error, what you're doing is the wrong way. Save yourself some money, save yourself some resources, and do things different. That way is not working, because if it was working, then you should be free, and you're not. And you have not been free, and you have not been liberated, going on 500 years. I am a warner. I suggest to you, don't go into that fire. I advise you, don't go into that. You don't know how to swim yet. Don't go into that pool. When you see someone who can't swim, or you don't know whether or not they can swim or not, they don't see a hole. They're going to fall into this pool of nasty, dirty water. You don't see somebody talking about, hey, you got some beautiful shoes on there. You got a nice, pretty coat. You don't hear that. You hear, hey, you're getting ready to fall into that hole. And a person will reach out and try to snatch you or do something to prevent you from falling into that hole. It's not about making you feel good when you are in a dangerous situation. The descendants of slaves born in America having dark skin, we are in a dangerous situation. And you have been in a dangerous situation going on 500 years. In fact, clearly you love danger. You love living dangerously. And we pay for living dangerously with our lives. Many of us do. We pay for living dangerously and we end up in the prisons all over this country. We end up at, a, at an early age in our life in the morgues and the mortuaries and the funeral homes of this nation. We end up as single mothers raising five or more children in a home having no help from a father. Many single males frustrated. They have not learned how to really be a man and learn how to take care of his women and his children 
and he's single, running around and angry and mad. Nobody wants him. He has not learned as a man how to get respect. I'm a I'm a good man. I got a job. I'm a good Christian and all. It's frustrating. Because you're not doing you are not doing what you should do in the appropriate manner. You're not using the appropriate tools. You don't use a wrench when you know you need a screwdriver. But you don't want to listen. I remember there was a scene from Good Times and James Evan was fixing something under the, under the sink. And just because Michael Evans was a little boy. He didn't want to take Michael's advice. Don't you need this wrench? Yeah, give me, give me what I want. Get. Then James start fiddling around under the sink. And next thing you know, Michael, give me the wrench that Michael suggested. Here I am. I am your Michael. I'm not forcing you to do anything. I'm just making a I'm just giving you advice and suggestion that you need to use these tools. You need to act this kind of way. You need to behave this type of way in order to get a job done. I am a warner. Don't go into that pool. You don't know how to swim. Don't eat that food. It's poison. I am just a warner. However, you want to eat the rat poison? You keep using the wrong tools and then you get frustrated and sit back. Why we don't have black unity? How come we don't have a nation of our own? How come? How come? How come? How come? How, how come? It is because you're not doing what is required. That is how come. And above all, once you do get it, in order to maintain it, you must have experienced a change that makes you different than what you are so that you will deserve the change because what the change that you're asking for is to go into the heaven that you are taught about in your scriptures in religious texts. And right now in the condition that you are in, you do not qualify, we do not qualify to enter the kingdom of heaven. You don't qualify. Thus, you cannot get a key. Thus, you cannot get in. And you won't never get in. So enjoy hell. That's all I can say.